Mistakes with endodontic access, how to avoid and what you can get if happened. New clinical case special for you. Let's go. Hello dear friends, this time we are happy to present you a very interesting clinical case of primary endodontic treatment and some mistakes that I made during process of treatment. And I have I, don't, I, I cannot say that I have a huge experience, but I have some experience with mistakes as well and I would like to share with you in order to help you not to make same mistakes in your daily basis. So before I will continue explanation and, and discussing the case, I would like to remind you not to forget to put likes and also to sign up to our YouTube channel. So let's go. We have irreversible pulpitis of upper four smaller tooth and patient has very acute pain. He came uh, with a big cavity. I isolated with a rubber dam system and we started to excavate caries and to open pulp chamber to get endodontic access. One a clinical tip I would like to share you, with you now. Uh, you can see wedge that I placed between teeth and wedge helps you to protect rubber dam during process of preparation. So when you have deep defects proximal defects, this wedge may protect rubber dam and you will not tear it during preparation process. So we opened chamber, we removed carriers and the wall here became very thin. The wall itself, the vestibular, uh, buccal, the, the vestibular meso uh, aspect of the wall became very thin, thinner than 1.5 millimeters. So that's why we decided to cut the cusp later on during process of restoration. You'll be able to see that. Uh, for root canals, I was able to find these root canals and I uh, tried to make my endodontic access as minimal as possible because I knew that minimal invasive access may help you to preserve very important cervical dentin that is very responsible for survival rates, for survivals actually, for, for endodontically treated teeth. And uh, here is our restorative part. I'm, I'm going to do restoration right now, so you can see that the vestibular, um, the buccal mesial cusp was removed. One more trick that I would like to share is that uh, we always try to isolate as much teeth as possible, even if we do single tooth endodontic treatment, like in this case, upper for smaller. So this video is about benefits that you will have from our online workshop. Presence effect. This is a unique feature by Belgrade Academy that literally moves you to our training center and you can stay close to speaker. This is like over shoulder format. The training process is filmed through the video system from the microscope and there are two more cameras broadcasting close up and general view. This way you can see everything in precise details. Efficiency. Do you agree guys that over shoulder workshop with detailed video and explanation is way better than regular slides? The third benefit is convenience. So basically you don't need to go anywhere and you can study in comfort conditions in your home, in your office, during running exercises, from your phone, from your computer, from your tablet and you can do anything you want with the content. So join us as we shift it online education into the next level. If you have possibility to place clamp on the distal tooth, use it because you'll be able to have better access to the tooth that you are going to treat. Another benefit is that I had now access to distal aspect of second premolar here with a caries defect so I can do really minimal invasive preparation of caries and provide minimal invasive restoration of the defect of the premolar. And the dentic treatment was completed, as I can say, successfully because I was able to find all root canals despite the fact that we had this minimal invasive access. I was able to instrument all root canals. I was able not to break my files during instrumentation. I was able to obturate, but the problem is that I made over instrumentation in coronal part of root canals. Here you can see what I'm trying to explain. In that area you can see that root canals in coronal part 
are over instrumented. It is not very good uh, feature because imagine if the walls of the roots were, will be very thin. In this case, maybe you may get stripe uh, perforation or you can make root very weak and after a while you may get vertical root fracture. So, so over instrumentation, especially on the coronal aspect is not a very good option. So we have to try to avoid it. The reason why it happened is that, let me go back to previous slides so you'll be able to see, is that the access to the mesosystem system was not correct. My file had complete uh, contact with the mesial walls. So here you see that when my instrument was inserted to the root canal, it get resistance from the mesial aspect of the of the of the orifice side. So in that case, you have to move your orifices more mesially. You can do it with ultrasonic tape or with a thin burr, the special endodontic burrs, to get your file to the root canal freely to the middle third. You can see it here, by the way, on the next slide. Uh, I would like to point your attention that my files are not in straight position during insertion. So that, that lead that when you have resistance from the mesial aspect here, the file will go to the minor curvature and it will get some over instrumentation to the minor, minor curvature as you can see here. Okay, so again, how to avoid, you have to be careful in every single case. You have to analyze what kind of root canal you have. What is the difficulty of the root canal? Uh, there is a process that we call scouting that will help you to understand if you need to make your axis wider. Do you need to make it wider in coronal part or you need to make it wider in, in uh, upper third of uh, root canal? If you guys are interested in that topic, I would like to invite you to attend our online masterclass that is called Endodontic Access Straight Line versus Mi Micro. And during this online masterclass, I will show you step by step all the process of access formation for different types of teeth. I will show you micro access, I will show you straight, straight line. We will be able to understand where is the limit of minimally invasive access or where is, where is the limit of straight line access, where we have to go straight line, where we can preserve what kind of instruments to use to make our endodontic treatment stress-free and also predictable. So if you, if you would like to attend, uh, please follow the link that is in the uh, description of, for this video uh, below. Okay, so let's go back to our case and uh, let's go to the next slide where you will be able to see restorative component. Here is an access to our uh, upper second premolar. By the way, let me go back to our uh, x-rays. I would like to ask you how many root canals, approximately, how many root canals you can see on this second premolar. Just imagine if there will be pulpitis later on or if we would, not, we would not treat caries and later on the patient will, came, will come. We were able to treat caries, so I hope that everything will be all right. So how many root canals you can see on upper second premolar? Write down your, in comments, please. Uh, it's interesting. So uh, restorative part. In this case, we decided to go for direct restoration. Since the patient is very young, he is under 20, and uh, we missed only mesial ridge and also part of vestibular cusp. The rest was intact and since we have minimal invasive access, we, have, we preserve tons of sound to structures. The occlusion also is, is very perfect, no tooth wear, no bruxes, nothing. So we decided to do conservative restoration. I decided to go with direct composite. Here is uh, dentin layer, here is the final a restoration and actually you can see the final result. What I will do now uh, if I will have the same case? Actually it depends also on the age of patient and the type of occlusion that he has. If my patient would have MOD, definitely I will go for cusp coverage and cusp reduction. But since he was young and I would 
be able, let's say, to monitor the patient in time, I would like to check up again after three, five years to see what happens with the restoration. Maybe he will get caries from the mesal, sorry, from the distal part. And I would change it definitely for cast production and cast coverage with a ceramic overlay. This is my approach nowadays. I'm not a big fan of direct restorations for endodontically treated teeth right now. So in such a cases, I would like to monitor, to see, and then to be able to find the proper restoration or, or to change my restoration for the better one in time. That's it. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got get some um, tips and tricks for your practice. Again, I would like to ask you to put likes and not to forget to sign up to our YouTube channel. I wish you to be healthy and may the dental force be with you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.